I'm Gui Mei Wang, X-ray physicist. I'm going to represent X-ray division to talk about NSLS2 new eyes for science discovery and how we achieve high performance, high stability beam. Uh, before I start my talk, I would like to start from this quote from Marcel Proust. The real work of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. This quote is so well prepared for science research and what we are going to talk about today, NSLS2, a giant microscope to provide important tools for science discovery. My work is at NSLS2 Accelerator, spans from design, build, to today's operation, and produce high brightness, high quality photon beam, giving scientists a new, si a new eyes for science discovery. So those are the great features of the photon beam at NSLS2 that exceed or compare with many other light sources, such as high brightness, high flux, high stability, and much more. With those outstanding beam quality, we provide the best research tools that can achieve world-leading capability, such as nanoscale imaging that has a world record resolution 7 nanometers, fast dynamic study, and ultra-high energy resolution measurement. Those three are the world best, all integrated in one light source, NSLS2. There are many other great capabilities at NSLS2, other beam lines that they can do, they are all great. I'm going to focus on the beam stability only and show how we did to improve them and to provide the world-leading research tools. So to reach the world-leading capability, such as the best image resolution, the high beam stability is crucial. What if the beam move or shake? Imagine that we take a picture that we shake hands or move an object. The picture will be blurry, like the left picture. It will be similar for the experiment. They need a very stable photon beam to reach the best image resolution, like the right picture. So the beam stability is an important beam performance parameter at an SO2. We make the photon beam from electron beam, so photon beam carries electron beam motion. We want to stabilize the electron beam motion to keep the photon stable. Our work is to improve the, sta the electron beam stability. So let's uh, first take a look how we make the light or photons. This cartoon video shows the process to create the photons from high energy electrons. Accelerator has three main parts, LINAC, booster, and storage room. Machines start from the electron gun, the burst place of the electron beam. Then we accelerate electrons in the LINAC, then in the booster to reach the full energy. Storage room is another big room, like a big water bucket, to store a lot of electrons. The electron from LINAC and booster is like a small cup of water to continue fill in storage room. This process of acceleration and fill in storage room repeat hundreds of times to get a storage room in high current. The key device in storage room is an insertion device that is dedicated to produce high brightness photons by wiggling the electron beam through the um, insertion device many times. With different design of the insertion device, it produces different uh, photon energy and uh, serves different purpose of the beamline research. The photon beam spectrum at NSLS2 cover a wide range, from infrared to the hard X-ray to support 29 beamline in operation now, 4 beamline on the, in con construction, and in the future, 60 beamline in fully operation. So let's take a look into the NSLS2 top view and internal view of the accelerator and beam line. And this part is the LINAC, and this is how inside looks like. And this is a booster and internal look. And this is a storage room part of the storage room and repeat along the whole room. And this part shows the insertion device, the different type of insertion device to produce photons. Then photon pass through the front end to the beam line. So storage room is where we produce photons and implement the feedback to suppress the beam motion. Here I have a laser point to mimic, uh, sorry, to mimic how uh, the uh, we produce electron beam to the photon beam and the photon carries the electron beam. The laser point is like the electron beam to provide the light. Uh, when we move the laser point or the electron, we can see the light movement. So we need to stabilize the laser point or electron to get the stable light. 
An accelerator is very sensitive to various vibration or environment change, such as the sun, the moon, Atlantic Ocean, or even Long Island traffic, or water pump or air condition at an SS2. For example, we feel the thermal effect from the sun, the day and night changes. This can also cause an SS2 the building or the storage and thermal expansion. Do you know that the moon and the sun, they pull the Earth's different strengths at different times? Yes, indeed. We observe it from the tide, the high and the low tide. They also pull accelerator and cause the electron beam slowly movement. We cannot control every source of this vibration. Instead, we implement the feedback to control the electron beam motion. Uh, this illustrates the beam position in storage. Ideally, we want it stable everywhere, like the black curve. However, when there is a vibration source, it will disturb the beam and pass the motion at different locations around the ring, as shown in the blue curve. Every beam line can see it. With the feedback, we want to pull the beam back close to the ideal location in red curve. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, show how the feedback we implement, including the RF frequency feedback and unified or orbit feedback. Storage during circumference is about 800 meters, it's like half miles. It changes due to the thermal expansion or gravity force change. Storage during can become bigger or small. How much does that change? Um, overall, it's about 100 micron over half miles. That's about the hair, our hair thickness. So what's that mean to the electron beam or the, to the experiment? The left side shows the electron beam movement and the right side shows what the beam line see. Electron beam has a slow movement. Over a day, it moves about 50 micron locally. The beam line image, you can see that with this 50 micron move, the beam line image become blurry. So I developed the radio frequency feedback by control the radio frequency. Thus, we can keep the beam about the same location. After we implement RF frequency feedback, we can see the beam movement is gradually improved by a factor about 10. And then here is a new image resolution from the beam line. It's much more clear and clean. Along with the fast RB feedback system, we ran like this for the first six years. And if we zoom in, we can see different beam lines. They can still move around over a week. That means we have some feedbacks work well. However, the problem is a long-term stability drift. Means after hours, days later, beam moved. This limitation is because we have a small number of fast correct to control many more locations of the at the beam location, uh, BPM location. That means we have less knobs much more target, you cannot correct everywhere to be perfect. So two years ago, I started to develop another feedback, unified orbit feedback, with my team member Yoshi Hidaki to further improve the beam stability. In this new feedback system, we integrate another group of the DC corrector into the feedback system. The challenge is that how we can run DC correct and fast correct, make them target at the same BPM location, Basically, which system will do what? Otherwise, they will uh, attack the same sense and fight with each other. Unified RB feedback system smartly make these two systems talk and tell each other how much they are going to change and dynamically change another system target location. So last July, we successfully implemented unified RB feedback into operation. Here is the beam stability you can see Comparing with our normal uh, feedback system, it's gradually, uh, gradually improved the stability from 20 microns to about 1 micron. And you can also see the beamline image, it's much more clear, much more sharper. So in summary, uh, we increase the beam stability gradually from 10 micron to 1 micron since its beginning. To further improve the beam stability, we need to improve the hardware, including the beam position monitor stability and resolution. You cannot uh, make the beam stable better than the resolution. And uh, or to benefit from the electron beam stability, beamline optics also need to have the further stability, improve their uh, diagnostic uh, optics stability and resolution. And to look even further, we can combine electrons and photon feedback together. 
So lastly, I would like to thank uh, as our two colleagues, both from X-ray division and photon division, for building and operating this great world lead uh, light source and the efforts to continue improve the beam performance. Specifically, I would like to thank for the key team member who work on the beam stability and thank you so much for your attention.